Today's video is proudly sponsored by Linode. Linode has been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually before Amazon Web Services was even a thing. On Linode's platform, you can get your server up and running in minutes. And they include all the popular distributions, such as Debian, Fedora, Ubuntu, and get this, even Arch Linux. And let's be honest, what could be better than a Linux-focused cloud server provider that lets you tell all of your friends, I run Arch? Linode has multiple server plans available to make any app scalable and flexible. You could use it to host a blog, a VPN server, a Minecraft server, and much more. In fact, Linode is the platform of choice to host the entire web presence of Learn Linux TV. In addition, Linode offers 24 by 7 365 support, regardless of plan size, so you can get help from a live person when you need it. New users can get started right now with $100 towards your new account, and I highly recommend you check them out because Linode is awesome. And now, let's get started with today's video. I have yet another Raspberry Pi related review for you guys this week because today in the studio I have the Desk Pi Pro version 2, which is a really cool kit that allows you to turn your Raspberry Pi into a full desktop computer. The Desk Pi Pro claims to have some pretty serious features here, including but not limited to a heatsink with a fan, an M2 slot, and it's also said to feature safe shutdown as well. Now, before we get started, I just want to give you guys a quick note, and that is that this particular product was sent to me by the manufacturer, but I retain all creative control over this video and all the other videos on my channel, so all the opinions that I'm going to give you are my own. The manufacturer was not allowed to screen this video, review it, and this is not a collaborative effort. All they did was send it over to me for better or worse, and I'm going to give you guys the review. So what exactly is the Desk Pi Pro? The Desk Pi Pro is a case for your Raspberry Pi that turns it into a desktop. But I feel like just simply calling it a case is doing it a disservice because it's a little bit more than that. It's much larger than your standard Raspberry Pi case, but it's not too big either. If you were to order one for yourself, there's actually three variations of the Desk Pi Pro available. The first of which is a bare bones case for those of you that want to transform your existing Raspberry Pi into a desktop. And then there's two variations that actually have a Raspberry Pi pre-installed. And specifically, they have a 4 gigabyte Raspberry Pi version and another kit featuring the 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi. And it's also very affordable. The 4 gig version is $129.99 and the 8 gig version is $169.99. But if you already own a Raspberry Pi and you just want the case itself, then that's going to set you back $59.99. So how much it costs just depends on what you're looking for and whether or not you already have a Raspberry Pi to use. You can save a little bit of money if you use an existing Raspberry Pi. I really like the fact that if you order one of the two variations that includes a Raspberry Pi, they'll pre-install the Pi for you so that way you won't have to assemble, well, anything. Unless you want to add an SSD, which we'll talk about later. An interesting side note though is that if you order a pre-installed version, they'll still give you the empty box that the Raspberry Pi itself came in. On the Amazon page for this product, they have an amusing picture there that lets you know that this is normal and not to panic. When I unboxed it, I felt it was a bit strange that they included the empty Pi box, but I wasn't too concerned by that. Speaking of unboxing, I'm going to show you guys that process right now. All right, so here's the desk Pi and I can't wait to get this out of the box. Let's check it out. So here we have the Desk Pi itself. And my first impression is that it's very solid. It's obviously metal, I could tell that it's metal. And I love how the ports are exposed on the back. That's pretty cool. Also right here, micro SD card, and it looks like it's Raspberry OS with the driver, just like it says here. 
That's pretty cool. Also, we have this right here, which uh, looks like it might be required for the USB ports. That's interesting. So I believe it goes right here. And here we have a USB cable. So this looks like it's USB-A to USB-C. And then of course we have the power brick. So I believe all we have to do is plug this in there and we have the complete power cable. So, now that we have the Dust Pi out of the box and I've had some time to play around with it, it's time to give you guys my thoughts. And my first impression is that, well, this is very solid. It just feels really, really sturdy. There's no flex at all, and it's made of a thick metal. So it kind of feels industrial, which is really nice. On the front of the case, there's a power button, two USB ports, and I love the fact that it includes an SD card slot right there on the front which makes it very easy to switch cards since you don't have to reach behind the unit. And some cases out there actually force you to disassemble the unit in order to change the SD card, so it's very welcome that the SD card slot is right there on the front. On the bottom of the case, it has rubber feet to help keep it from sliding around, and it's a pretty strong grip too. In fact, the rubber feet are fairly thick, so the only conclusion I could come to here is that whoever designed this case, they really hated the concept of having something slide around, and the Desk Pi is definitely not going to move. On the back of the unit, we have access to all the ports, but one exception is that one of the USB ports is used as a sort of bridge to the case itself, so you won't have access to one of the ports, but all the other ports are available. And like I mentioned earlier, the Desk Pi itself is quite a bit larger than your average Raspberry Pi case, and I'm showing it here with the Argon 1 case for comparison. Now personally, I don't mind the larger size, in fact, I think I prefer it. One of the reasons for that is because the Argon 1 case can get quite warm, and the Desk Pi has a lot more room for cooling. In fact, it has a very neat heatsink, which you can see here. It almost looks like the type of heatsink that you'd expect to find on a desktop computer, so this cooling system really means business. Another feature that I like about this case is that it has a built-in M2 slot, so you can attach an SSD. It also allows you to attach a 2.5 inch hard drive as well, so if you want to add additional storage to your Raspberry Pi, it's very easy to do so. It's important to point out though that the Desk Pi does not support NVMe SSDs, so keep that in mind if you do end up ordering one. The M2 slot is completely optional, but it is there if you ever need it in the future, and it's definitely a great feature. The kit came with a branded SD card, which is pretty cool. And my understanding is that it's supposed to be a customized image for this case. That being said though, you can use your own image, you don't have to use theirs. And they also make the safe shutdown script available to be installed separately, so that way if you have your own OS set up, you can easily use it here with the Desk Pi and then add that driver, and you should be able to use the advanced features. Now, since I received the pre-assembled version, I'm not going to show any footage of me putting it together because, well, I didn't have to. But I figured I'd show the process of installing an M2 SSD, which means I'm going to have to disassemble it, so you guys are going to be able to see the inside of this particular case. Now, there are a ton of screws on this thing, but the process of disassembling it is very straightforward. To begin the process, there's a handful of screws to remove on the bottom, and then there's two screws on the front that you can remove with the included Allen wrench. At that point, the insides of the unit slides out, exposing the Raspberry Pi, and then the top plate is where the M2 slot is. Like I mentioned before, you can actually install a 2.5 inch hard disk inside, but I had an M2 SSD lying around and I decided to install that. After you put it all back together and then boot it up, you can actually use the included SD card copier to copy the operating system from the SD card to the SSD. After you do that, you simply shut it down, remove the SD card, and it'll actually boot right from the SSD. That way, you can use your Raspberry Pi without any SD card at all. And that's awesome. 
And this is actually the very first time that I ever tried running a Raspberry Pi from an SSD. And it definitely feels a lot faster when compared to the SD card. But keep in mind, this unit does utilize USB to connect the SSD to the main board, so depending on how fast your SSD is, USB itself could be a bottleneck. Although the Desk Pi with an SSD won't be as fast as some PCs, it definitely seems to respond plenty fast enough for desktop use. Now the concept of using a Raspberry Pi as a desktop computer replacement is not a new concept, but it is something that is getting more and more popular as time goes on. And we now have the Raspberry Pi 400 as well, which is a Raspberry Pi built into a keyboard, which is really awesome. That's another option to consider if you're trying to use a Raspberry Pi as a desktop. And the Raspberry Pi 400 itself is actually cheaper than one of the pre-installed kits for the Desk Pi Pro. Like I mentioned earlier, the Desk Pi Pro starts at $59.99, but that's without a Raspberry Pi, whereas the Pi 400 starts at, I think, around $100 US dollars, and that includes, well, everything. And the Pi 400 is definitely an awesome solution, and I love mine. But there are a few downsides of the Pi 400 that the Desk Pi itself makes up for. For example, the Pi 400 is locked to 4 gigabytes of RAM. I'm hoping that they release an 8 gigabyte version of the Pi 400 at some point, but it is what it is. Also, the Pi 400 doesn't have an M2 slot, so if you want to run an SSD, then the Desk Pi is probably a better solution. So it's a bit of a trade off depending on what's more important for you. The Pi 400 is going to save desk space since it's built into a keyboard, and there's also going to be fewer cables as well. But having an M2 slot and a really cool cooling system on the Desk Pi is definitely a benefit in and of itself. On the other hand, the Desk Pi has better cooling, support for the 8 gig Raspberry Pi, and an M2 slot. So as far as which one is superior, that just depends on, well, what's important to you. Now, another option is the Argon 1 case, which I've reviewed on this channel before, and it's definitely an awesome case. Now, one downside is that the Argon 1 gets quite warm to the point where it's a bit uncomfortable to touch, but you could fix that by just ramping up the fan, and then it'll be plenty cool, but it'll also be louder. Now, by comparison, the Desk Pi runs a lot cooler with that really awesome heatsink, and the bigger case means that it gets more airflow as well. So at no point did I feel like I needed to adjust the fan on the Desk Pi. It stayed cool throughout my test. Now, let's talk about the driver for the Desk Pi Pro. It allows you to control the fan curves, and it's also said to feature safe shutdown as well. Installing the driver is very easy. It's just a matter of downloading a script and running it. Once you install it, you'll be able to customize the fan curves to suit your liking, which is pretty neat. Now, the script is supposed to offer safe shutdown, but for some reason, that didn't work for me. If I hold down the power button for just a few seconds, power is cut off immediately. Now, this doesn't really bother me so much in my case, because if I want to use it as a desktop, I could just shut it down from the menu. However, if you plan on using the Desk Pi as a set-top box, then this might be a major downside for you depending on your configuration. I'm sure there's probably a way to get it to work, but I wasn't able to figure it out before it was time to record this review. Let me know in the comments below if you found a solution for this. So at this point, I think the market is getting a little bit crowded when it comes to cases that allow you to convert your Pi into a desktop, but that's a good problem to have. That means we have choice. Now, I really like this one quite a bit. I just love how sturdy it feels. I like the bigger size, the heatsink. It's definitely a premium case, and I highly recommend it. But at the end of the day, just check out all the solutions that are available and just choose whatever you think is going to fit your needs. I do recommend this one, but we have a lot of competition out there, so it's important to keep your eyes open. Did you go ahead and order one of these? Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next video, which I should have uploaded very soon. Thanks for watching.